Israeli forces shoot and kill 16-year-old Palestinian. Israeli forces have shot and killed yet another Palestinian teenager in the southern occupied West Bank. The victim, Emones Rebi Musa Zaydat, aged 16, fell victim to this tragic incident on the evening of October 11 in Bani Naim, east of Hebron. Emones was struck in the chest by Israeli forces around 8.15 p.m. and was subsequently transported first to the Red Crescent Center in Bani Naim and later to Al Mizan Hospital, where he was pronounced dead at around 9.15 p.m. This event marks the latest in a series of heartbreaking incidents, as seven Palestinian children have been shot and killed in the occupied West Bank since the commencement of the Israeli military's full-scale assault on Gaza, known as Operation Iron Swords, on October 7. These confrontations are occurring in an environment where Palestinian children regularly face live ammunition during protests, further exacerbating the tense and dangerous atmosphere in the region. Regrettably, this growing trend has witnessed Israeli forces targeting Palestinian children at demonstrations with live ammunition, even in cases where there appears to be no immediate threat posed by these young individuals. Since October 7, a number of distressing incidents have unfolded, starting with the shooting and killing of 12-year-old Ahmad Abdulnazer Adnan Rabi near the Israeli-controlled Eyal crossing. The following day, Yusef Nader Suleiman Idris, aged 16, lost his life during clashes in Hebron, and Imad Jer Majid Adeli, also 16, was fatally shot by Israeli forces in Beta. On the same day, Yasser the Sami Kusba, 17, was shot and killed near the Israeli military-controlled Kalandia checkpoint between Jerusalem and Ramallah. In the early hours of the following day, 17-year-old Adam Umjad Fathi al-Jalani was killed as clashes continued at Kalandia checkpoint. On October 11, 17-year-old Obada Sadawad Abu Srawar was shot in the back in the village of Khuzra, which lies southeast of Nablus. The circumstances surrounding this incident were equally distressing, as armed Israeli settlers and soldiers entered the village and attacked a Palestinian family's home. Palestinians confronted the group, leading to indiscriminate live ammunition fire. Obada's life was cut short when a bullet struck him in the back and exited his chest. He was taken to Salfit Government Hospital, where he was tragically pronounced dead. These incidents draw attention to the troubling fact that, this year alone, Israeli forces and settlers have shot and killed at least 46 Palestinian children in the occupied West Bank. Additionally, Israeli forces killed another Palestinian child through a targeted drone strike in the same region. At least 26 Palestinians have lost their lives as a result of actions taken by Israeli forces and settlers in the occupied West Bank since October 7, as reported by UN OCHA. It is essential to remember that, under international law, the use of lethal force is justifiable only when there is a direct threat to life or the potential for serious injury. However, investigations and evidence collected by Defense for Children International, Palestine consistently suggest that Israeli forces employ lethal force against Palestinian children in circumstances that may amount to extrajudicial or deliberate killings. These tragic events underscore the urgent need for diplomatic efforts and a peaceful resolution to the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. They highlight the necessity for de-escalation, dialogue, and a commitment to preventing further loss of life, particularly among innocent children caught in the midst of this complex and long-standing conflict. International attention and diplomatic initiatives should prioritize achieving a just and lasting solution for all parties involved.